Hey guys, what's up? It's Yannick. Welcome back to Gasoline Culture and welcome to the Range Rover Sport SVR. So we decided to review this car just because on our Brabus G63 video, many of you actually commented about this car in the uh, comment section saying that it's the better SUV or at least sounds better. Now, uh, today we're just gonna see whether that's actually true. And uh, yeah, so check out this car. It's pretty damn cool. It's a shame Range Rover drivers don't wave to each other like G-Class drivers do. That's already one reason why the G-Class is cooler than the Range Rover SVR. Look at these views, man. Now, I'm not a fan of those crackles because they're just straight up fake. They do sound cool within the first, like, 10 minutes and then you're like oh my god I'm so over this so anyway Range Rover SVR um, what is this car about so basically it's the fastest sportiest version of the Range Rover Sport now as you saw from the exterior shots no one can argue with the fact that this car is absolutely stunning I mean Range Rovers have always looked good I like the big one the full size uh, as well as the sport even the predecessor to this car was was a good looking car for sure um, I really like it in this color combination. I think it's Chorus Gray along with the black roof and basically the whole blackout package. And probably the most important part of this car is actually the wheels. They are not stock, they're 23 inch um, StarTech forged wheels. So basically the exact same wheel as on the um, Brabus G63. For those of you that don't know, StarTech is actually owned by Brabus, so that's why they're the same design. Now, I really, really like the aggressive looks that this car has, um, especially with that aggressive front bumper and the louvers on the hood, as well as a super cool diffuser at the back and, of course, those trademark four exhaust pipes sticking out the back, which do emit a really good sound. does sound really good although to be honest I don't know if it sounds better than a Brabus G63 because that car you know even though let me get those crackles for you even though this car does sound good it's a little bit too shrieky like the pitch of the sound is very high whilst the Brabus is just a monster you know it's just got that low rumble in my opinion is more befitting uh, to the car but uh, there's no doubt about it both cars sound really really good all right guys so let me give you a couple of stats on this car so it's 550 horsepower and 680 newton meters of torque from its 5 liter supercharged v8 now that's the same engine coming out of the Jaguar F type R so that also explains why it sounds so good get a load of this exhaust Then again, it must be said that, you know, no matter how much power this car has, it does weigh almost two and a half tons, which, you know, I mean, even for today's standards, it's still such a heavy car. But, uh, you know, when you floor it, it definitely picks up and goes. I mean, it's not like uh, this car is slow by any means. So whilst we're stuck in traffic here, I'll talk a little bit about the interior of this car. So obviously it's a Range Rover, as you would imagine, it's a nice place to be. Um, I mean, you know, there's leather everywhere, which is something that I really appreciate. I mean, on cars like the Audi RS6, it's not standard to have a leather dash, which I think is a complete joke considering what the car costs. But uh, I know it's available as an option, but the option is horrendously expensive. And in this car, basically, you know, you have a leather dash, which I think just makes such a big difference. It makes the interior look so much better. Now, in general, um, there's nothing really negative about this interior, except the super, super old navigation system, which I really think they have to replace. And I'm sure they also will, because looking at the Range Rover Velar that we saw in Geneva, which has like insane touchscreens all over the place, I'm sure that 
that will find its way to the Range Rover Sport soon enough. But other than that, what I really, really like are the seats. Uh, you have these bucket seats in the Range Rover SVR, which I think are amazing. I mean, whilst they're a bucket seat and really give you that support that's necessary, um, you know, in a sportier car, I guess, they actually are still comfortable. So it cannot be compared with a regular bucket seat. I'd even go as far as to saying that it's you know, more for the look, I guess, but I think they hit the nail on the head with the interior. I think it looks really, really nice. The seats are really cool. They, they just look great. You can get bucket seats in the back for Christ's sake. I mean, how cool is that? Then the steering wheel, I'm not a big fan of just because I think it's a little bit, you know, it's a wimpy little thin steering wheel which I don't think suits the nature of this car. I mean, it's, it's a Range Rover. It's the, you know, it's the big SVR. It's supposed to have like nice sporty steering wheel. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the same thing you find in an Evoque, which is a little bit disappointing. Um, but other than that, it's, it's great. Then there's digital displays um, for, for the tech and, and for the Speedo and everything, which I usually don't like, but it's pretty responsive. So there's nothing to complain about there. I mean, you get used to it after a while, I guess. Then, uh, of course, you have a panoramic sunroof, which is always nice to get some light into the cabin. And um, yeah, I mean, another thing which I think could be standard would be the Alcantara headliner. It is available, but this car doesn't have it for some reason. Um, I just think it would be good to have these things as standard on, on the flagship model of, uh, of a certain car. But, you know, it's something which is easy to live without. In terms of comfort, let, let's talk about the suspension really quickly. So this is the sportiest version of the Range Rover Sport. And basically it is stiffer than even a regular supercharged one. And you definitely feel that whilst driving. I mean, we have really good roads in Switzerland, which aren't particularly bumpy. Uh, but even here, you know, just going over slight bumps, it's just got that little bit too much rigidity for my taste, uh, but it's in no means, by no means uncomfortable. It's uh, still a super smooth Range Rover like ride and you know probably the 23 inch wheels don't help. But other than that the ride is supple, it's compliant, it's comfortable and you can easily take this car on, on long trips or, or whatever and arrive very very comfortably at the other end. Now in terms of sportiveness you know, I mean, at the end of the day, this is still an SUV, and a Porsche Cayenne, in my opinion, still handles a lot better, uh, but that's just because it's a Porsche, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, they're the ones setting that benchmark uh, in, in terms of sportiveness for, for SUVs or for any car. But I have to say that, you know, the, the dynamics of this car in terms of suspension aren't bad at all. I mean, it does handle corners pretty well. If you consider its size and its weight, it's really nimble, actually. I mean, it's surprisingly nimble. And the suspension, you know, it soaks up the bumps and really it points you in the right direction. You know, like there's not that much body roll. I mean, we're just going through a little chicane here and it's actually surprisingly good. It's not as good as a KN, as I mentioned before, but it's definitely, definitely a little bit better than a standard Range Rover. Another point which has to be mentioned are the brakes. So this car has big Brembos, obviously, with the signature SVR blue calipers. And they look really cool and they actually work pretty well. But I do have to say that when you, you know, when you're pushing along for quite a while and, and you're using them a lot, they do tend to fade a little bit. I mean, you can't really blame the car considering the fact that it's super heavy. But, you know, ceramics would just be awesome. Now the transmission, obviously ZF 8-speed, you know it's everywhere nowadays and as you know from previous videos I'm not the biggest fan to be honest because everyone keeps raving on about it and whilst it is pretty good for an auto box at the end of the day it just doesn't have that snap of a dual clutch gearbox um, you know it's it's fine I mean it's it's just nothing spectacular and you know the, the gearbox it's not the youngest anymore either but yeah all of this stuff basically all of this dynamic stuff doesn't really apply here I mean I don't want to bore you too much with uh, you know with these sort of facts about suspension and steering I mean it's an SUV it's not really supposed to handle and we have to of course mention that Range Rovers are still the best cars off-road I mean whilst no one takes these cars off-road anymore especially not an SVR for example 
you know, we do have to say that this is a very, very capable off-road vehicle. Um, whether you use it or not, that's a different story, but just knowing that it could is already a good thing. Do I think it's cooler than a G63? No, I don't, because obviously I think the G-Class is in a league of its own. It just has that amazing cult factor, which obviously no other SUV has. Um, but all in all, I do think this car is super, super cool, super good looking. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the, it, it, it basically, it sets the standard. It sets the standard. It's a Range Rover. I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. And all in all, it's definitely a really, really good car.